In this lesson now in worksheet number three, we're going to look at measures of dispersion. So dispersion uh, attempts to describe how spread out a set of data would be. And any dispersion has a value of zero uh, will happen when all the data values are the same. You'll see that in the example that we'll do next. Uh, but that's important to remember. So you'll come back to that in one of the questions below. So there are two measures of dispersion we'll look at. First is range, and then we'll look at something called standard deviation. Range, uh, the simplest way to put it, is the distance or difference between the highest value and lowest value in a set of data. Important to remember that the range gives no information about any of the values, only the difference between the highest and lowest. Standard deviation is a measure of dispersion of the values as it relates to the mean. And so let me move down there. Oops. Okay. A low standard deviation means there's very little dispersion and the data is very close to the mean. And a high standard deviation means the values are further apart. Uh, there's more spread within the data. There's a symbol that we would need to know for standard deviation, and that's the Greek letter sigma. To calculate standard deviation, and that'll come up further uh, within this. There's a formula here uh, that you'll need to know. Now, don't worry about that formula. We'll break it down into smaller pieces uh, so that it's not one large calculation you do at once. All right, so there's a couple examples here I want you to go through, and we'll have a good understanding of uh, why we need to look at mean and standard deviation, or sorry, range and standard deviation. So we'll take the example here of two students, uh, Tim and Luke, and the test scores for five units are shown here. And what I would like for you to do is calculate the mean, median, and mode for each. So you each have your worksheets, and even if you uh, left them behind at school, you can still work through these. So I'll pause the recording and give you a chance to do those calculations. All right, now you've had a chance to calculate the mean, median, and mode for each. Remember that the symbol for mean is x bar. And to find the mean, we add up each of the test scores. So for Tim, we added all the scores. You get a total of 350 and divide by the number of scores, so 350 divided by 5, and he has a mean of 70. Luke has the same mean uh, when you calculate it. The median, uh, the scores are already la uh, ranked from lowest to highest in order, and 70 turns out to be the middle for both scores, and mode, uh, there isn't one. So what can you tell about students' marks based upon the measures of central tendency? Uh, really can't tell much difference. So hoarding. So the measures of central ten tendency. no difference. The marks look identical. Uh, you really can't tell much information about this. Okay, we'll look down to the next question. Calculate the range. And for Tim, uh, remember what we said above, the range is the difference between the person's highest score and their lowest. So Tim has the highest mark of 80. He has the lowest mark of 60. So he has a 20 mark difference from his, lowest, from his lowest score to his highest score. For Luke, uh, Luke's highest mark is 72. His lowest mark is 68. And the range is 4. Now, so how does finding the range? From the three measures of central tendency, mean, median, mode, they were identical. So we couldn't tell any difference between the two students. But if you look at Tim, you know that Tim uh, 
It's got a higher mark on one test than Luke's highest mark. His greatest mark is bigger than Luke's. His lowest mark, though, uh, is much lower than any of Luke's lowest marks. So Tim seems to be a little bit all over the place here. Uh, he has a range of 20 marks from lowest to highest. He has an average of 70 or a mean of 70, but his marks uh, has a 20-point spread. Luke, though, seems to be more consistent. His highest mark is 72, his lowest mark is 68. That tells you he pretty well hits uh, on a test within four points uh, where his uh, test mark would be, where his mean would be. So his data is not as spread out. He seems to be closer getting uh, to the mean when he writes a test. So what can we say for Tim? There's more spread for his marks. So I don't, although he has a mean mark of 70, uh, he seems to be a little bit uh, all over the place there. So more spread for his mark, uh, 20 points. So there's more variation here is what we're trying to say within Tim's mark. We could write that way if you want. Greater. Use the up symbol. Up arrow symbol there. And just a way of saying greater variation. For Luke, as uh, less spread. So you could say it was more consistent in these marks. Another way of saying that, there is less variation. Again, his spread is only four points. Okay, so we'll look at another example of that. So in a science experiment, students test whether compost helps plants grow faster by counting the number of leaves on each plant. So the results are shown in the table below. So you have a group of plants, and in each case, you have two test groups, group A and group B. So for six plants here, you're going to uh, grow them without using any compost, and group, P, uh, group B, you're going to feed them using compost. And for each of those six plants, you'll count the number of leaves, uh, just an indication of growth, how well they're doing. So for group A and B, calculate the mean, median, and mold. Pause it there. All right, so we pick up from here. So the mean for group A for the number of leaves on each plant was six, and turn it to be the same for group B. Uh, the median, I left that one until I uh, turned the video back on with you guys. So you're looking for the middle score. Uh, when you look at these, you, you don't have one middle score. And we said that when you're calculating the median, you take the two scores in the middle and you find the mean. So you would add four and five together because they're both in the middle and divide that by two. So nine divided by two would be four and a half. Do the same for the next group and the median, you have 4 and 6 are in the middle, add those together, and divide by 2. And that will give you 10 divided by 2, or 5. So there. Okay, and in the mode, the most common or recurring score for group A is 4 leaves per plant, and group B would have 6 leaves per plant. So we see that the mean is not helpful in calculating uh, or determining if compost is good or not for a plant. For the median, uh, both are pretty close. One's got four and a half leaves per plant. Uh, group B's got five, so there's a little difference there. And the most occurring score, uh, four for one, six for another. But when you look how often it occurs, six is only happening twice, and four is happening twice.
So you got to take that in consideration when you look at the mode. It might be the most current, but it's only happening twice. When you want to determine the, the range for both here, let's see if that can give us any extra information. So we take our high score for group A. So one plant had eight leaves. Another plant had three. So the range here is five. For group B, one plant had 11 leaves. Another had one. Here the range is nine. So we see that there's a bigger spread uh, with group B and a group A uh, it's a little more centered around the, around the mean. But it's still hard to pick it out. The, the data seems to be a little bit all over the place. Uh, again, the mean for both are the same. The median turned out to be uh, very close to each other. There's a slight difference within the mode for both. And but we see from the range that group B is more dispersion, there's more variation within that. So dispersion here describe dispersion. Well, we're gonna say there's more spread or it could say variation. within group B. Uh, in case you're wondering guys, I'm going to take these notes and post them online. So I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, I did make a mistake, so I'm sure I won't even count it. It should be 10. And then which group is better? Justify your answer. Uh, hard to determine which group is better. Uh, I know there's more spread within the second group, uh, but the other values are so close. I mean, if you had to say which one's looking better at this point, it would be group B, but it's still hard to determine. I think we need a little more information in order to make a determination which group is doing better. There's a question that we will look at in class, and that's number two on page 240, so make sure you have your books there. Okay, we're almost done uh, for what we're going to cover here, because like I said, we'll leave most of the work uh, for this within class, but I do want to go over standard deviation. What standard deviation does, it tells on average how far is each number or score you get away from the mean. We'll look at that here uh, with an example. I'll only do the first one. Okay, so we got another group of test, or, test scores. Uh, Tim and Mary. And we're going to calculate their standard deviation. Now, that formula looks pretty ugly. Uh, if you look back up at it here, it can, well, let's be honest, it can look quite confusing there. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. What we will do with this, and uh, if I ask you to calculate it on assignment or quiz, test, I'll give you a chart so you can break it down like this. And here's how you calculate standard deviation. So helps if you take all your data scores, and we're going to do this for Tim right now. So all of his test scores are written in here, in this column. So let's call your data values. Data is just any information you have. So you would calculate the mean. So that's the first step. And the mean from adding all these together, the total is 350. So you would take 350, divide by five scores, and he has a mean of 70. Now the deviation from the mean, this x subtract x bar, x just refers to a score, x bar is the mean itself. What you do here, you take each separate score and you subtract it from the mean. So 60 take away 70 is a negative 10. 
65, take away 70, negative 5, 70, take away 70. So in this case, this score was right on his mean, so there's zero difference. 75, take away 70. You get 5 and 80, take away 70. Now, instead of just being writing numbers down, let's try and understand what's happening here. So with this test, when he gets 60, he's 10 marks lower than the mean. That's what the negative means. When you get a deviation here, negative 5, it means he scored 5 marks less than his mean. Here, he was dead on. It's the zero difference. Here, performed better than what his mean turned out to be for the for the course. You have 5 marks higher. And here, you get 10 marks higher. Now, negatives don't work really well. Uh, if you look at the formula, you see there's a square root sign. Uh, so we got to get rid of those negatives. So how we do that, you take each of the scores and you square them. So you get 100, and remember when you square a negative, it turns out to be positive. Now we had spoke about this symbol here, summation. And summation means take all the scores, so we're going to take all the scores where we subtracted our score from the mean, that was this column. We squared them all, which was this column, and we add them together now. So 100 plus 100 is 200 plus 50. So 250. This part formula, the end means divide by the number of scores that you have. So 250 divide by 5 scores, and you get 50. And the last step is the square root of that answer. And the square root of 50 turns out to be 7.1. So that's that formula broken down in steps, and each step has to be followed. So first, let's just summarize that. So first you find the mean. Then you find the deviation from the mean for each score. After that, you square each of those deviations. Add them together. Divide by the number of scores. And then you take square root of it. So what we're saying with that 7.1 is that even though his mean is 70, the 7.1 means that whenever he writes a test, he's either going to be 7 marks higher than his average or 7 marks lower. That's what you can expect. So again, just repeat that. So for Tim, if someone would ask you how Tim does on a, uh, in his math course or it could be biology, whatever, English, you can say, well, Tim, Tim usually gets a 70 on his test. However, from looking at standard deviation, we know that he could be 7 marks higher, or he could turn out to be 7 marks lower. That gives you an indication of pretty well where Tim's going to land on his test. So he could be anywhere from, if we said 7 marks higher, he could be as high as 77, or he could be down close to 63. That's pretty well where we expect Tim to land. So he might have a mean of 70. But he could land, on average, most times, anywhere from, say, 63 to 77. All right, we're going to leave it at that one. We're going to look at Mary's scores together in class to make sure uh, that we're okay with this, and we'll answer the rest of the questions in class. All right, thanks, folks, and uh, have a good afternoon.